Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and recently I've become a little obsessed with a line of servo control boards from Pololu called Maestro. These are a great way to get started in animatronics or Halloween props, and I'm going to show you how they work in this video and show you a little bit about how I put them to use. Now, you can use practically any dirt cheap microcontroller board to make a servo move. It's like Arduino 101. But when you want to orchestrate a bunch of servos to move in a somewhat natural way, it can be a pain to dial all that in by adjusting servo positions and timing line by line in a code editor. With the Maestro, you get a free software editor that allows you to visually map, label, and control each servo. You create animation sequences by taking snapshots or keyframes, playing with adjustments in real time until you get something you like. When you're done, you just upload the sequence to the board and unless you want to peek behind the curtain, there's no need to even see or touch the code. So if you're not comfortable with code, this opens up a lot of possibilities. And even if you are comfortable with code, there are certain kinds of projects this lends itself to. So for example, I was inspired to make this project called The Doorman by Tajazi on Thingiverse it's a 3D printed mask and eye mechanism. With the original, using an Arduino, you get these sharp eye movements and you can kind of notice as it steps through each line of code like clockwork. When I remixed it with a Maestro board, I was able to create a more natural sequence of movements that I liked a lot more. Feeling confident, I took on a more complicated build. This is a 3D printed animatronic robot head designed by Jonathan Odom on Instructables. I love this one, and it was originally designed to be puppeted manually, but using the Maestro, I can define a whole routine that it runs through the moment it's turned on. So here's what you need to get started. The entry-level Maestro board gives you six channels of control for around $20. If you need more than that, there are 12, 18, and 24 channel versions that you can get to. You'll need some servos. You can find a pack of five on Amazon for around $12, and you'll need a mini USB cable to power and program the board during setup. But you'll also need a separate power supply to power the servos. If you're working with servos that run on the same five volt power the board needs, you can just use a jumper to run everything from the same connection. But for some projects, your servos will need more power and having them powered separately is necessary. This board lets you do that. So what I have here is a five volt power adapter that can power both the board and the servos I've got that connected up to the board using a barrel jack with screw terminals on it. You can incorporate this jack right into your design, though for some projects you may want to go with a battery pack for portability. Here's how it all connects up. For this demo, I've got a handful of servos connected up to the six channel Maestro board. The polarity of the connection is marked on the bottom of the board for a quick way to figure out which way to place the connection. They're also numbered, so I know that I'll be working with channels zero through four. You'll also notice a battery power input up here. This is where I'll wire up my barrel jack connection and connect my five volt power supply. Again, without a jumper, this will only power the servos and not the board. I'll show you how to do the jumper at the end though. For now, we'll power the board over USB since we'll need to plug it into a computer anyway so that we can program this thing up. Now the software for the Maestro is PC only. It's called the Maestro Control Center and you can download it from Pololu. There's also a great installation guide on Pololu that walks you through the first time setup. With the software open and your board connected and your servos powered on, your board should automatically be detected and configured for use. You can test things out by enabling each of the servos and adjusting their position using the slider. Here is the simplified concept of how this all works. From the status tab, you use the sliders to position the servos just how you want them. Then you hit the save frame button down in the corner and now you move them to the next position you want, save the frame, and on and on until you think you have the sequence about right. Next, you jump over to the sequence tab where you can play back that sequence you just made, add, delete, or adjust frames, tweak the timing, and set it to play in a loop if you want. When you're good here, you just hit the copy sequence to script button and it generates all the code for your sequence and loads it onto the board. You can see this code in the script tab where you can edit it directly. This tab also has a key checkbox here at the top, 
so that your sequence will start as soon as the board powers on. This is optional because you can also set things up so that the sequence will start when a button is pressed or a sensor is triggered. Finally, to simplify power for this project, I'm gonna run a jumper now from the positive rail of one of my available servos to the voltage input pin. Now the board and the servos will draw from the same five volt power input. On the bigger versions of this board, you get a little shunt that you can use to quickly do the same thing. Now, the result we get isn't that impressive. Using the basic setup here, it's the same kind of herky-jerky animation we get from an Arduino sequence. Next, I'm gonna show you how to get a more interesting natural movement. Back in the status tab, notice these two columns for speed and acceleration. The speed setting determines how fast the servo moves from one position to the next. The acceleration setting creates a curve for how fast or slow the servo ramps up to the speed and ramps down to a stop. If that sounds a little confusing, just play with adjusting these values and notice how the blue dot of the servo's current position slows down or speeds up to meet the green dot of the target position. These little changes can have a big impact on creating realistic movement. Neck movements can be slow and smooth, eyelid movement can be fast and snappy, mouth movement can be jittery or simple, and all of these servo settings can be independent of one another. Once you have some settings you like, you plug them into the channel settings tab and hit apply. In this same window, you can narrow the range of movement, define the servo startup position, you can add custom names for each channel, and even switch channels to act as a button input or sensor input or a PWM output for an LED. There's a lot you can do here, just remember to hit apply settings when you're done. After that, you'll script all the movements just like we did the first time around, only now each servo will have a personality all its own. And really, there's a lot more you can do with these boards. They can work over serial control from a computer or Raspberry Pi. You can make them more interactive with buttons and sensors. And there are scripts that you can find on Pololu that you can copy and paste into your code for more advanced control. So that's the magic of the Pololu Maestro boards in a nutshell. You can find a full write-up for this guide over on maker.pro with links to everything. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.